All right, in this second lecture video in chapter eight, we are going to introduce the example problems that we're going to be showing in separate videos. And we're also going to introduce in this particular video one additional problem type that often gives students the most trouble if we're focusing a little bit too much on plugging numbers into equations and we aren't thinking enough about the overall big picture problem solving and critical thinking skills that we're building. So we'll make sure that we know how to approach these problems and how to think about them. So the first example that we're going to see uses the conservation of momentum equation to figure out what's going to happen when two objects hit each other and stick together. So we will see this example in its own separate um, example video. The second example that we're going to see is when two objects hit each other and then don't stick together. If we're given one of those final velocities, then we can solve for the other one. And that's what that second example is going to go through. And then the third example that we have a separate lecture video for right at the beginning of this chapter is two people, two objects that are not currently moving, but then push apart from one another. And because they are not currently moving, we can see that with no velocity for either one at the beginning, the overall momentum, the total momentum for the system is zero. And so they'll push apart from one another and one of them will move to the left and one of them will move to the right. And we'll see how that's handled in example 8C's own example video. The key thing that we will notice in these problems is that sometimes we lose kinetic energy, that's the most common thing that happens, and sometimes we gain kinetic energy in problems. That's what happened with the recoil problem, where because we pushed off of each other, we now have movement when we didn't before. What's really key is that for the collision itself, for the problem that needs momentum, two objects that are in contact with one another, we cannot use energy balance from chapter seven to solve these. That's the big key idea for those introductory problems. But the other thing that we need to be aware of is that there are going to be situations where there is a collision and other things that happen. So we now need to talk ourselves through two-step problems, and then we will see several examples that have their own lecture videos. And there are two possible situations. Objects hit each other and then something happens where that something that happens will look like a chapter seven problem. They slide up a ramp, they um, push into a spring, something where we can follow the energy around after the collision, once we have that final velocity after the collision. Or there will be situations where something happens to a single object, which is makes it faster or slower, maybe it rolls down a hill or it rolls up a hill or it's um, started with a spring, things like that. And then it hits into some other object. And then the collision becomes the end of the problem. We will see both types of examples and it is worth paying attention in those example videos to the fact that there are two separate steps. And the end of step one whether it is momentum or whether it is energy, the end of step one becomes the start of step two. We basically have to find some in-between situation that is happening. If there's a collision first, we need to find the final velocity so that we know what that starting kinetic energy looks like and so on. For most students, they tell us that these are the toughest problems that come out of chapter eight. And so we have three different examples that show what these two-step problems look like. The most important overview that we can have here is that there is no shortcut in these two-step problems. We cannot just take the energy situation at the beginning and after a collision and hope for the best. If the object hits something else and changes the mass that it has, we cannot just ignore that process. Because as we would have seen in those first couple of examples, we can lose kinetic energy or gain kinetic energy during a um, collision in a way that we cannot easily track with energy problems. And so we can only use the energy uh, balance part for the part that we can track. So in this first example here, an, a pellet hits a block and then the whole thing slides. The first thing that we're told about is a collision. Those two things hit each other and that's 
all that happens and then other stuff happens. That's what I mean by the two steps. We will need to use momentum conservation to know what the final velocity is immediately after the collision so that we know for the second half of the problem how much in initial kinetic energy it has before it slides to a stop and then we follow the energy around in a standard chapter 7 problem. We will see this have its own example video. In this example, the 3 kilogram cart slams into the 4 kilogram cart and then the collision rolls uphill. This again is a situation where the first thing that happens is a collision and then we can follow the energy problems around in the second step of the problem. And again, this is one where we will have a separate video showing us how this works. And then the third example in this section is we have a four kilogram cart that's at the top of the hill. It rolls downhill and then it collides with the three kilogram cart. So stuff is happening in a energy balance kind of way for just the four kilogram mass. And then once we've figured out the energy for that four kilogram mass to get the final velocity in step one, that becomes the velocity at which it is about to hit the three kilogram cart in the collision part, in the momentum second step. If we think about this simple last example, one question, not, the, not that the problem itself is simple, but a simple question that we can ask ourselves, when they actually do hit each other, is the block moving at four meters per second faster or slower? So I want us to think about that. Pause if you need to or rewind the question. When the four kilogram is about to collide, just critical thinking question, is it gonna be moving at four meters per second faster than four meters per second or slower? Okay, so we've had a chance to think about it. Hopefully what we realize is that if it rolls downhill, it's gonna speed up because it starts with kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy, and all of that is gonna go into kinetic energy. It will be moving faster, and so we have to do an energy problem to figure out how fast it's actually moving at the beginning of the collision. So we'll see a whole lecture video for this example as well. So this lecture video is mostly just to make sure we have an overview of what we're gonna be seeing. The next um, portion here is the elastic collision uh, idea, what that word means and what inelastic collisions are as well. I can't believe I forgot to sign off. So normally I would say see you in the next one, but I guess I have to add something like, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that um, bell button. I don't even know how YouTube works these days, but all of those things. All right, sorry about that. I just left. <laughs>